Hey guys, I'm Mike, and I think The Punisher is easily the best thing to come out of Netflix Marvel shows. Frank Castle was the standout in Daredevil season two, and I can't wait to see him go ham on some unsuspecting mobsters in the upcoming Solo series. There's a ton of Punisher stories for the show to draw inspiration from, but I hope the Netflix Punisher is going to be the adaptation that finally does Garth Ennis justice. Parts of his work have shown up in various Punisher films throughout the years. But outside the MCU version, none of them have ever captured the depth and darkness that Ennis brought to the character. Let's take a look at Garth Ennis' impact on The Punisher, starting with the pre-Ennis era. The Punisher was created as a Spider-Man villain in 1974, but he didn't really quite reach the peak of his popularity until the grim and gritty craze of the late 80s and early 90s. The 1989 Punisher movie starring Dolph Lundgren was actually a decent adaptation of this era's comics. Holy shit, the Punisher! It's him! Moving for a close up! Even though he never wears the skull. But in true Punisher form, the film doesn't skimp on the body count. Even then, it just feels like a generic revenge flick. Grow up to be a good man. Because if not, I'll be waiting. And that's because Frank Castle hadn't really been defined as a character yet. Sure, we knew he was a Vietnam veteran killing to avenge his murdered family, but beyond that, he was still mostly just a cookie cutter Death Wish clone. By the late 90s, the character had kind of fizzled out, at least until Garth Ennis came along with Welcome Back Frank. When Ennis and preacher artist Steve Dillon got their hands on the Punisher, he was in a pretty sorry state. At the time, Frank Castle was an avenging angel who fought demons with magic Jesus guns. Ennis and Dillon threw that shit out the window and gave Frank a back to basics revamp in 2000. Unlike the later Max series, the Marvel Knights Punisher was firmly embedded in Earth 616. The series is full of black humor and insane action, like when Frank unloads a shotgun in a Wolverine's crotch and runs him over with a steamroller. And by the way, that happens after the two team up to fight a gang of evil dwarves who are kidnapping folks and hobbling them at the knees. Or the infamous zoo chase scene where Frank literally punches a polar bear in the face so it'll maul an old lady. And Ennis can be serious too, like the issue where the Punisher hunts down an old squad mate from Vietnam who murdered his own family. Castle knows he's not the only one who got a taste for something bad during the war, and he takes pity on his dark reflection, as much as he can anyway. Garth Ennis' Punisher is one of the best examples of dancing that fine line between hero and killer. The movies though, not so much. Let's talk about 2004's The Punisher. You are one dumb son of a bitch. We're gonna have to a gunfight. This might have been my biggest cinematic disappointment since the Star Wars prequels. Right off the bat, they moved the Punisher from the grimy streets of New York to the sunny beaches of Miami just because it was cheaper to film there. This was screenwriter Michael Franz's idea. He also convinced the studio that Garth Ennis' gory comedy would never work on screen. So instead, we got a bland revenge movie starring Tom Jane. Now don't get me wrong, Jane actually makes a pretty good Frank Castle, and he definitely proved it in the awesome Dirty Laundry short film. You know the difference? between justice and punishment. But this movie's portrayal of Frank Castle is fundamentally flawed. He's not a sociopath and he's not a serial killer. He's just an ex-FBI agent who lost his family and is looking for justice. It's been five months since my family was killed. I don't see one man in jail. Obviously, you're upset. Upset? Is that the word? The movie desperately wants you to empathize with him when you're supposed to be scared shitless. Frank isn't supposed to be Batman. He's a deranged lunatic. You look like a strong kid. You must work out. This anti-personnel of mine weighs eight pounds. But don't leave me like this. You took everything from me. You killed my son. He's basically the comic book version of Travis Bickle. How's everything in the pimp business? Huh? Out of here, man. Get out of here. Suck on this. Oh, oh, oh. Sure, some of Ennis's characters showed up, like Spacker Dave and the Russian, 
but they felt out of place in the dull Florida setting. I can't fault the movie too much though for missing the mark because Ennis's real defining run started the exact same year with Punisher Max. If the Marvel Knights comics were hilariously over the top, Punisher Max is as serious as a crazy vigilante shooting up a mobster birthday party. I personally think it's one of the best runs in comic history, and it pretty much defined Frank Castle despite the fact that this isn't the real deal. See, Punisher Max is set up in an alternate universe without superheroes or sliding timelines. With the freedom of Marvel's adults-only Max imprint, the brutality on the page could finally match the horror show going on in Frank's own head. There's one scene in Max that perfectly sums up the Punisher for me, where he describes a reoccurring nightmare. He's finally killed all the criminals in the world, from the lowliest hitman to the highest fat cat CEOs. His work is finally done, but he doesn't stop. He turns his rage on the innocent because his bloodlust can never be quenched. You get this impression from Ennis's run that the death of Castle's family is just a flimsy excuse for his decades-long killing spree. In the Bourne miniseries, set during Frank's service in Vietnam, he makes an unholy pact with the voice in his head. To survive a hopeless battle, he finally gives in to the primal rage that's been boiling beneath his surface. Castle gets his wish for an unending war, but he'd have to pay a horrible price. Now don't get me wrong, the Max run can still be pretty funny, and Ennis found the perfect balance between humor and horror. But the next movie, Punisher Warzone, went way too far in one direction. I actually kind of like this movie, it's utterly insane. Warzone is probably the only time in cinematic history where a parkouring Irishman is blown out of the sky with an RPG. And Ray Stevenson looks just like the battered old bastard from Punisher Max. The problem is, the movie has the gore and vulgarity of the Max comics, but without any of the depth. Instead, it leans hard on the humor from the Marvel Knights era. Like Uncle Sam, bro. We recruit in troubled neighborhoods. Offer a hundred grand towards a college education they'll never get. And promise nobody ever has to go to Iraq. <laughs> but even they fumbled the ball there. It's great to see Detective Soap in all his pathetic glory, and Wayne Knight makes a pretty solid microchip. Well, if you watch closely enough, you just might see me. <laughs> But Jigsaw and his brother are the campiest comic book villains since Two-Face and the Riddler. You just can't take them seriously, and it makes the whole movie seem like a cheesy cartoon. You. Let me put you out of my misery. There's just no room to explore the crevices of Frank Castle's up mind. That's why I'm glad the MCU Punisher has the space of a TV series to work with. I love how they use Daredevil as a vehicle to introduce Frank Castle. Since he's not the protagonist, the show doesn't have to overcompensate for all the evil shit he does in order to make you like him. Who was there that day? Who killed my family? Your family? Yeah. Who cares? Frank's still a sympathetic character, but from our hero's point of view, he's still a stone cold killer. I'm just some crazy asshole going around unloading on whoever I want to. Yeah, huh? that's exactly what I think. I you think you're anything else? He literally shoots Daredevil in the face. The Netflix shows aren't just using Ennis' work for window dressing, Daredevil even based a whole episode on the rooftop showdown from Welcome Back Frank. Ah! But my favorite part has to be Frank's courtroom testimony. Once I put down the people I killed, I want you to know that I'd do it all again. This is a circus, all right? It's a charade, it's an act. It's just like in A Few Good Men, where Jack Nicholson has to justify his own horrific actions. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death while tragic probably saved lives, and my existence while grotesque and incomprehensible to you saves lives. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. He knows that society might not agree with the means, but they sure as hell like the ends as long as someone's willing to do the dirty work that everyone else is afraid to do. The difference is Frank Castle actually enjoys it. Any scumbag, any, any lowlife, any maggot piece of shit that I put down, I did it because I liked Order. it. Hell, I loved it. 
And that is the sinister twist that Garth Ennis introduced to the character almost 20 years ago. And it's great to finally see it brought to light in live action. I can't wait to see Netflix and Marvel finally unleash the real Frank Castle in the Punisher series. See you around, Red. Hey guys, I'm Mike, and I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I personally am a huge fan of the Punisher, and I would love to talk to you guys in the comments on what are some of your favorite Punisher plot lines. So, please leave a comment, and as always, subscribe to Now This Nerd. Thank you.